Good afternoon, my name is Pierre, I'm an importer and distributor of guitars and I run guitars online and import a number of brands from both um, Spain and I uh, distribute a number of Australian makers. I'd like this afternoon to welcome Paul Nash who is president of the Classical Guitar Society, has probably bought and sold more guitars than, uh, than most of us and over the years I've got to know him well and he is a player that knows how to bring out the best in different ranges of uh, guitars. So this is part two of how to choose a guitar and it's Paul's very personal learning over the years of what's actually worked for him in choosing guitars. So we're going to go from a range of guitars that go from $100 to $399 to a mid-range which is about $1100 then a bit higher from that, 1900, and then we're getting into high-end student guitars and concert guitars. Just to give you an idea of what you can expect at different levels of the price-value relationship of, uh, of uh, guitars. And of course these are just some examples, I can show you many others in different price ranges, but for today we just wanted to work through what the, uh, the different ben benchmarks and what you should be looking for in, at, uh, at different price levels. So Paul. Cool. Okay, thanks Pierre. Well, why don't we start with this guitar. So what, what have we got here? Pierre? This is a Z, an Alhambra Z Nature, which is a good entry level guitar. The advantage of this guitar is that even though it's only $399, it has a solid top. It is made in Spain with what's called the Spanish foot. And the Spanish foot is important because it incorporates the back sides and the top into one join. So a lot of the cheaper guitars are just a bolt-on neck. Um, what that means is that the guitar sounds sounds boxy. So this is the an amazing guitar at that entry level in that it has all of those features and a quality cedar top which makes a great deal of difference when you're coming to perform at exams or concerts. Yep, so you can see the, uh, the Spanish heel there and it attached to the, um, the, the, um, the neck. And the heel goes right through into the body. Right, okay. Now, the first thing that I'd normally do is make sure when you're testing a guitar that it is in tune, that it's in concert pitch. So, uh, these classical guitars, the first string should be E, second string B, and I've got a tuner obviously here. Exactly in tune, just because for, for reasons we'll talk about in a minute. Now, when you've got um, a cavity like this inside the guitar and strings attached to it, there'll always be what are called woof notes. And generally, what makers do, and obviously Alamba are very experienced in making a whole range of guitars, they try to avoid the open strings as any of those woof notes because that will be disconcerting if a note that you're using all the time is sounding much louder than any other note and uh, so one of the thing, the first things you should just check they will sound pretty even across the strings if we played those notes just in the first four positions was that as I went from basses to trebles there was a pretty discernible difference and you know let's let's face it we're talking about a, a three or four hundred dollar guitar and you would expect that it won't won't uh, be perfect across the strings but what you're looking for is, is any kind of technical problem like a buzz if you can't play these notes particularly on the first fret With rest strokes, I'm playing into the note, into the string, and I'm not getting any buzzes on the first fret. But generally, the first thing I just sort of check because if there's, if it's going to buzz 
anywhere, it's probably going to buzz on the first fret. It can buzz off in other spots as well. But just out of curiosity, Paul, yeah. what is a wolf note? A wolf note is where the note on the guitar, let's say a G, just happens to match the resonance, the, the basic resonant frequency of this cavity. Mm -hmm. And it will amplify that note much more than another note. So what makers do, and different makers have different ways of doing this, and obviously each one of these ranges would have a different solution, but they try and make it, instead of G, which is a very common note, maybe they make it between G and G sharp. Or, um, so they don't want any of the notes you're going to use that, that might sit in between. And that's one of the reasons why you want the guitar to be in tune, because you don't want note, notes you use all the time to be affected by any kind of wolf note. Now, wolf notes, by the way, become more and more of a problem uh, as the guitars get better, because obviously the kind of cavity you've got, the kind of woods and the resonance you've got in a top end guitar, we'll see later, uh, so much more, and the volume you're going to get is so much more, that any slight wolf note is going to be much more uh, obvious. So they're more a problem the further up the range you go. So the, advanced student uh, entry level concert mm -hmm. and beyond models um, and, and they can sort of hit any guitar but uh, even when you're beginning you want to try and avoid, avoid guitars that have that if you're buying a second hand one for instance. The other thing to note is its general playability so if I just play a few chords you know how are my fingers feeling when I play the chords? Obviously, depending on how long you've been playing, that may or may not be possible. But if you're finding the guitar difficult to play, that might be because it could be because you need to practice more. <laughs> but it could also be that there is a problem with the what's called the action. So if the strings are too high and the, the guitar has been set up such that this bridge is much higher than it should be, and um, if you like, the strings are a lot further off the um, the fingerboard than they should be and this can happen with second hand guitars as they get older the slight bends can develop in the neck uh, the th this whole fingerboard can sink um, sometimes with a second hand so you've got to be a bit more careful with second hand guitars the way i check for that is to actually place um, the finger so that the string is going over this 19th fret on the sixth string and then hold down the first fret and then you look down the string and you see if um, that generally speaking the frets are near the, pretty near the string they don't they, there's no big bow in the neck that you, you should be able to see that if there was a bow then the neck would uh, depart substantially from the line of the string there and you'll be able to see it pretty easily all guitars will need to have a gap between when you do this but if uh, I've had guitars where this has happened even uh, you know famous brand names and you know, if, if a, uh, a, a bend in the neck develops, then you can have that corrected. You know, they take it into a, <laughs> a private room and <laughs> do stuff to it to correct the uh, the bend in the neck. But you don't really want to start off with one that's uh, got that. But what you generally find, by the way, with the range like Alhambra, they're they're so meticulous with how they make each of the models and they've got it down to a fine art. I mean, guitar, like this guitar at $300, it's approximately what I paid for my first guitar, a, a, a Yamaha. Oh, did I say Yamaha? Um, <laughs> uh, but that was a long time ago, like, I forget how long, almost 50 years, 50 years ago. And, um, and it was only semi-playable, by the way. And it suffered from a number of the things that I'm telling you about that, that, that had problems. And I only really used it for a, for a, a month or two until I actually went to a teacher and then the teacher said, well, this is you know, probably not good enough for you. So uh, I got a new guitar. But um, so it, uh, another thing I'd recommend if you're just beginning, get your teacher to choose, uh, to assist you to choose. So th they're, the, they're the basic things in terms of the playability. You want, want to be able to hold down chords, even though you might not be doing these chords for quite a while, you know, a bit further in your education if you're only just beginning. And certainly down in the first position, you need to be able to hold down basic chords and, um, and the thing 
fingers, you know, are able to sort of cope with that. And obviously, as you get better, uh, play more, you'll be able to do that better. But if your teacher's having problems with it, then there's probably something wrong. Um, the other thing to, uh, with most guitars, if there's going to be a problem um, with notes not sounding properly, then it's the first string that is the most difficult for a maker to get right. So I try every note on the first string. So let, and I let it ring a little bit, and then I'll, I'll comment, comment as I go. Well, probably at the end. By the way, just... The G is slightly louder, actually, but it's not unpleasant, and the other notes aren't unpleasant, so that's fine. What you're listening for is a note that dies away too quickly. That's okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. It gets more challenging as they get up to here. You'll notice that note slightly deader, it just dies away slightly quicker. The, it just seems to die away a bit too quickly, uh, but this is only a three or four hundred dollar guitar. That one dies away. So the E sharp. Now, generally, that's not a problem, by the way, because we don't play the E sharp very often. <laughs> so fine, you know. But if the E did that, uh, that might be a bit of a problem because a lot of tunes. You know, end with that E. That dies a little bit. That's nice. That's nice. And then after that, probably you don't have to worry. So um, up to the A, it's probably good. So you can sort of see that there are slight differences, and on some guitars, they are more noticeable than on others. And you can have notes that you play them and they they die instantly, and you think, oh my god, that's just terrible. And it, and it is unmusical, and it's probably a sort of guitar to avoid. Now, those kind of things you won't necessarily get in the lower end guitars, but you can sometimes get in second hand guitars where things have gone wrong, particularly if the struts inside or whatever, things aren't quite as they should be, and all of a sudden problems develop. The, the only other thing that I check for is, um, is buzzers. So if I play into the string, now if I keep playing until I make it buzz, it's very hard to get It's sort of buzzing a bit. really a buzz, it's just that I'm playing it incredibly strongly. With some guitars they'll fold under that, and particularly if they've got, if they're uh, non-traditional guitars by the way, they'll tend to fold under playing too heavy a rest stroke. Like... But that's nice and clear, no buzzes. This is great for a beginner. Generally speaking, very, very good value for money. Um, you know, aesthetically, it's not the nicest guitar. This look, this matte finish here, you know, like obviously we're talking, it's made to a price, um, but it is made, uh, it's, got a, uh, it's got a nice top, um, but it is, uh, it is made so that it is very playable and you could, you could use this for your first few grades, you know, up to maybe grade four or something like that. Um, you, could, you could use this guitar and be quite, it'd be quite acceptable. Um, you might want to get a better one after grades two or three, but uh, on the other hand, you could play up to probably grade four. By the time you get to grade five, probably you would need uh, mm -hmm. to get something a bit better. Part of this is that this has proven to be a very popular guitar with schools and ensemble playing because it's for a student guitar. It's very loud and you can play it hard. So for an ensemble, it projects very well. But as Paul says, yes, if you go off to the next model, that is a lacquered model. Now, part of the advantage of the lacquered models of the, well, this is the Z, the 1C, yes, you can play that harder, it projects more, because it is lacquered and it's a prettier guitar. And it also has a better top. So, as you go up the range, everything gets up upgraded. But 
for an entry level guitar that has a solid top and does everything that you need it to do technically and is very well set up, it's great value. Now the next model that we're going to be showing you is the 4P, which is an intermediate level guitar. The 4P is $1160. As such, it has a much better top, has a more complex internal structure because basically the only way to make a better guitar is to either have a, a better top and a far more complex internal structure that takes the, the, the maker far more time to, uh, to make. So this is a more accomplished guitar for an intermediate player that's been playing perhaps for uh, three, four years, five years. Um, it's not that the other one you couldn't play the same things on it. It's just that as you get more ambitious as a player, you want a guitar that can support you to do far more complicated complex things and that's essentially why you upgrade as a player you get more and more greedy um, and it's the, uh, the, uh, the uh, guitar is just better set up it's easier for you to uh, to play and get all the effects that you, that you want yeah so let's have a look at this one um, I think the first thing I notice is it's got more sustain it's got a nicer sounding I guess one of the things about the guitar is often what you're wanting on the first and second strings to play a melody, to play some accompaniment in the middle strings and then some kind of bass. And uh, in the end, you want to be able to make the, the melody sound, the accompaniment sound and the bass sound. pieces are uh, for the guitar are made up that way. So if, if any of those sort of die away too quickly, particularly the melody, uh, then you're going to have a problem. This, this guitar is very nice from that point of view. seventh or eighth grade I think with this guitar. Mm -hmm. So what, what's this one worth? Uh, that is nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. So that's so, still reasonably priced. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're not talking about a Stradivarius, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's reasonable on the budget and um, uh, so and it's something that would last particularly those early grades. And obviously with a, a parent buying one for a student, you've got uh, I mean, there are a lot more players that play up to grade five and grade six than go mm -hmm. further on. So this would be fine. You you wouldn't have to. You, you could buy this with confidence, and they'd be fine mm -hmm. uh, for the grades while they're in secondary school. And then I, I think you know if they um, last that distance, then you could always get another mm -hmm. guitar if they took it yeah. up further. But also yeah. have a good resale value because it's a solid top. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually an old solid guitar. And there's lots of students that are looking for good quality second-hand guitars. Yeah, I mean that's a nice, and yeah. the fact that it's uh, that's a special edition, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's got the uh, mahogany. It's a bit unusual, uh, but very nice. So the guitar that you'd probably move to if you were going to go to the higher grades, which is just a concert guitars tend to start around about five thousand dollars. So the next model up is 3009, which means that it's really a high-end student, almost a concert, but without the concert price tag. And again, this is a model that's this is a Tempe that Paul himself played for quite a long time, until he upgraded to some of his latest concert guitars. Well, I thought um, one of the things that struck me about the Tempe was that it was, uh, as a a, a playable concert instrument it was it, very good value. So what are the, what are the prices on? 3900 Fine enough, the same price it was almost 10 years ago. Yeah, well, I think that's what I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right, yeah. So, uh, Pierre was uh, generous enough to trade it in on another one, but you know, um, but it was, it, it did me for a number of years. Oh, I better, no, I've broken, I haven't tuned it, so I better do that first. It's an interesting thing too that comparing this Tempe to the one Paul would have bought 10 years ago 
this is a much better 10, 10, 10 P because guitars have been upgrading all the time. Alumbra has become the biggest brand I bring in over the last 15 years because they've been improving the most. So a new guitar is always going to have the latest and greatest of lack of work, internal structures, all the upgrades. Funnily enough, people who say that the guitar hasn't evolved much compared to other instruments um, just don't get out long enough or enough because every time I go to Spain every year I see new upgrades and I buy the best I can find. And this is certainly a much better guitar than Paul's old 10, 10P. Yeah, no, this is this is very nice. I can already tell just by yeah. having a bit of a play. So let's let's just have a listen to a, a basic E minor chord. Plenty of sustain, you know. Um, sounds out of this guitar. Mm -hmm. Let's just check the notes and check there aren't any problems. Again, just a slight bit of give. I usually try and hammer down on the fourth or fifth fret and there's a little bit of give there. That's great. It's not a big gap between the string that is straight and the fingerboard that's just got that slight note but nothing uh, untoward about it. Um, the actual action looks quite good and it's got um, a bridge that could come down a little bit, go up a bit, so you've got a little bit of room to manoeuvre with it. In actual fact, talking about those sorts of things, at this level, the guitars, in actual fact, the three models down, they start to come with two bridges. One which is a lower setup, the other one which is a higher setup, because again, you're going to be wanting to both play for ease of playing with a lower setup, but in concert or an exam, you're going to want to be able to, uh, to push in more. So they come with two different with setups. With two. Mm. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's very handy. That is pretty <clears throat> handy. The, um, uh, let's just try the notes. this is just a double check just to be sure nothing uh, you know there isn't some slight uh, problem with manufacture if there were any of the frets were uh, slightly dodgy you would get a buzz along there if one is not quite the right height you know just double checking for that you don't want to get the thing home and then realize that there's uh, uh, a problem and Pierre probably has two or three of these out the back so <laughs> you can choose another yeah well the deal is, is there's a three-year warranty with oh, right, any yeah. one of these guitars so if there is any any problem um, for whatever reason, I will just either fix it or exchange it for another one. So it's yeah. not a problem. I don't like people to get stuck with a problematic guitar. Mm. Um, yeah, so really anything from the entry level $399 to the $30,000 guitar will always be fit for a purpose for the level of the guitar that you've, that you've purchased. Mm. Well, that's, that's nice to know because sometimes you know, after six months something might uh, mm. present itself and it's, it's nice to know you can go back and ha have some redress with the, the importer and the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is try and get your local maker or your local um, repairer to try and repair it, possibly do more harm than good, <laughs> and it's going to cost you money anyway, so uh, <laughs> best to take it back.
brass bracket. But we focus on this just as a means because it was easier to illustrate the, the technical issues that you need to look for, such as buzzet, wolf notes, and things like that. Um, and Alumbra is relatively free of all of those, so it's very easy to, uh, to show it. Mm. Um, but yes, more than happy to walk you through the range at any stage, and you can compare and contrast and decide for yourself, because that's really the only way of knowing mm. whether it's an entry-level guitar or a high-end guitar, of really knowing that that's the guitar for you. So I always have them in stock and feel feel free to give me a call and just come and try lots of guitars without any, any obligation whatsoever. Well, I guess in, in summary, mm. there's, there's student guitars, up to advanced student guitars, mm. up to maybe 5,000, something yep. of that order. Yes. Uh, there's a sort of an intermediate range of, um, you know, tertiary student, I guess you could say, all the way that could go up to 12, and then mm. Uh, but you can always get in other ones, of course. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some have been tempted. To, uh, <laughs> I know that I was, at the end. <laughs> so I have uh, one of the upper models of the Palina Bernabe Bay range, as, as well as the NT, actually. Yes, correct. So, uh, and I like to, uh, I mean, I think guitarists should have three or four guitars, quite frankly, so that they can compare. Because, mm -hmm. they, they, I mean, as we've seen, each different um, model, they, they have a different kind of sound and actually Absolutely. some pieces just sound better on some guitars than on others. And, you know, if you happen to be a Bach expert or you, you love Spanish music, well you're going to choose a different kind of guitar Absolutely. probably. So anyway, in, in summary it's been a great pleasure to uh, join you Pierre and have a look at some of your guitars and hopefully um, the viewers will <laughs> benefit from our analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for coming on by and doing that, because the first article we did was just a written thing, and then we thought, well, given that we're talking about good guitars, we should really try and video something for you so that you can see mm. the, the differences. And Paul has been kind enough, given that he's played so many of my guitars, mm -hmm. to come through and uh, do a demo for us today. So thank you very much. Thanks again. Hasta pronto. <laughs> Sure. Other one, other one, other one, two, three. <laughs> I can't. Now you know, know where, where you need to cut from. <laughs> right, so I guess in summary, we've tried a number of guitars from three or four hundred dollars up to mm -hmm. what, twelve or thirteen thousand? Thirteen thousand, yep. something of that order. Of course, uh, in your range, Pierre, you've got many others in, in between, sure. haven't you? I have um, guitars starting yeah. from, everything I do is a solid top because otherwise you don't have a quality tone and it's very hard to have a decent guitar. Mm. But everything from the $300 going up, they just get better and better as you go up the range. Um, and I go over to Spain every year and I buy guitars and compare and contrast them to make sure that I've always got the, the, the best guitar. I bring in Paulino Bernabe, I bring in Contreras, I bring in Almanza, I bring in all sorts of brands um, at different price points. The reason why mm. we're focused on Alumbra is that over the years, because of the relationship between quality and value, they've become my, uh, my biggest sellers. But of course, if you wanted to compare different guitar brands and different models in different price range, I can do that too. Because I have about five different models or any, in every price bracket. But we focus on this just as a means because it was easier to illustrate the, the technical issues that you need to look for, such as buzzet, wolf notes, and things like that. Um, and Alumbra is relatively free of all of those, so it's very easy to, uh, to show it. Mm. Um, but yes, more than happy to walk you through the range at any stage, and you can compare and contrast and decide for yourself, because that's really the only way of knowing mm. whether it's a entry-level guitar or high-end guitar of really knowing that that's the guitar for you. So I always have them in stock and feel feel free to give me a call and just come and try lots of guitars without any, any obligation whatsoever. Well, I guess in, in summary, there's, there's student guitars, up to advanced student guitars, mm. up to maybe 5,000, something yep. of that order. Yes. Uh, there's a sort of an intermediate range of... Um, you know, tertiary student, I guess you could say, all the way that could go up to 12, and then, mm -hmm. uh, but you can always get in other ones, of course. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some have been tempted to, uh, <laughs> I know that I was at the end, <laughs> so I have 
uh, one of the upper models of the Palina Bene Bay range, as, as well as the NT, actually. Yes, correct. So, uh, and I like to, uh, I mean, I think guitarists should have three or four guitars, quite frankly, so that they can compare. Because, mm -hmm. they, I mean, as we've seen, each different um, model, they, they have a different kind of sound, and actually Absolutely. some pieces just sound better on some guitars than the right. others. And, you know, if you happen to be a Bach expert or you, you love Spanish music, well, you're going to choose a different kind of guitar, Absolutely. probably. So anyway, in, in summary, it's been a great pleasure to uh, join you, Pierre, and have a look at some of your guitars, and hopefully um, the viewers will <laughs> benefit from our analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for coming on by and doing that, because the first article we did was just a written thing, and then we thought, well, given that we're talking about the guitars, we should really try and video something for you so that you can see mm. the, the differences, and Paul has been kind enough, given that he's played so many of my guitars, mm -hmm. to come through and uh, do a demo for us today. So thank you very much. Thanks again. Hasta pronto. <laughs>